Welcome to the TearSet tutorial video series. In this tutorial, you will learn how to use the Spatial Decision Modeler application within TearSet to solve multi-criteria and multi-objective resource allocation problems. Decision makers often need to balance many criteria and multiple complementary or competing objectives when deciding how to allocate resources. For example, Town policymakers may need to balance the desire for increased development and economic gains with the desire to protect natural lands and resources. For this tutorial video, we will solve a similar multi-objective land allocation problem for the Metro West area of Massachusetts. We have two objectives. The first objective is to allocate 3,600 hectares of land for protection from development based on the criteria of distance from roads, proximity to protected areas, distance from urban areas, and distance from residential areas. The second objective is to allocate 3,600 hectares of land for residential development based on the criteria of distance from roads, cost distance from urban areas, percent of open water in view, and slope. We will also use a constraint in the model to constrain the result from urban areas, residential areas, and bodies of water. Click on the Spatial Decision Modeler icon to open it. Start your model by adding all the variables and constraints for the land protection objective to the modeling window. You can add variables by clicking the drop-down menu next to the Decision Variables icon and selecting the type of variable you wish to add. You can also add data by dragging and dropping the layer from the TearSet Explorer and selecting the appropriate radio button. The next step is to stretch each variable to a uniform scale of 0 to 1. We could do this using a basic linear stretch with the stretch module, but the stretched variables should reflect the suitability of each level of the input variable for the objective in question. The relationship between the input variable and suitability may not be a simple linear function. The fuzzy module can handle more complex relationships between the input variables and suitability. To add a fuzzy operator to your model, click the drop-down menu next to the Decision Operations icon and select Insert fuzzy operation. Add one fuzzy operation for each variable in the model. Connect the input variables to the fuzzy operators by clicking the connect icon, clicking the input image, and dragging to the fuzzy operation symbol. Right click on each fuzzy operator to specify the parameters for the operator. The fuzzy module uses a fuzzy membership function to determine the suitability of each level of the input variable. The function can be symmetric, monotonically decreasing, or monotonically increasing, and can be linear, J-shaped, or sigmoidal. The user chooses control points to customize the shape of the function. The output images are given names automatically, but you can change them by right-clicking the Output Factor File symbol. These are the suitability images created by the fuzzy module. Each factor now shares a common scale of 0 to 1. Once we've created suitability images, or factors, from our variables, we need to do a multi-criteria evaluation to aggregate the factors and create a map of overall suitability for the protected land objective. Add an MCE operator to the model, and connect all the factors and the constraints to the operator. Again, right-click the MCE operator to specify the module parameters. The MCE module carries out a multi-criteria evaluation to aggregate multiple lines of evidence into a single suitability map. You can select different aggregation options and specify an importance weight for each factor in your model. The factor importance weights should sum to 1. 
There is also an option to calculate your factor weights using the weight module, which uses the analytical hierarchy process to calculate a set of weights based on user inputs. This module requires the decision maker or stakeholders to compare criteria in a pairwise manner and judge their relative importance. Using this process to derive importance weights can help promote dialogue on the problem at hand, identify limitations in the design process or criteria, highlight knowledge gaps, or simply lay out the decision problem in a logical manner. The aggregated output created by the MCE module looks like this. Locations with values near 1 indicate high suitability for the protected land objective. Now that we've determined the suitability of each pixel for the protection objective, we need to find areas that are suitable for residential development by following the same process. Add your variables for the development objective, convert them to factors using fuzzy operators, and link the factors and constraints to an MCE operator to create a single suitability map for the development objective. These are the suitability images for each variable for the residential development objective. On the left is the MCE output for the residential development objective, and on the right is the MCE output for the land protection objective. There are many locations with high suitability values for each objective, and some locations seem to be suitable for both objectives. The question now is how to allocate land to these competing objectives. To solve this problem, we can use the Multi-Objective Land Allocation Module, or MOLA. Add a MOLA operator to your model, and connect the two MCE outputs to it. Right-click the MOLA operator to set the parameters. You can choose to use either an area requirement or a budget requirement for the allocation. If you choose to use a budget requirement, you'll also need an image depicting the price of each parcel of land within the study area. In this example, we want to allocate 3,600 hectares of land for each objective and will therefore use the area requirement. Make sure you input the area requirements as number of pixels. For this example, 40,000 pixels is equivalent to 3,600 hectares. You can also select different weights for your objectives if desired. Finally, you can force the module to provide contiguous or compact allocations of land. If you don't select contiguous allocations, the software will select the most suitable pixels for each objective throughout the study area, potentially resulting in scattered pixels or clusters allocated to each objective. In our example, this distribution of allocated areas is fine for the residential development objective, but is not an optimal solution for the protected land objective. We would prefer the 3,600 hectares allocated to the land protection objective to be contiguous in order to provide a large, unbroken natural area for the protection of local animal species. By forcing the selected pixels to be contiguous, allocated pixels will be clustered together. You can also choose to force the allocations to be compact as well as contiguous. I'll run the model twice, once without forcing contiguous allocations, and once with contiguous allocations to see how they compare. You can then run the model by clicking the Run icon. While the model is running, the operator being evaluated will be highlighted in green. The output and a textual summary of the output will automatically display once the model has run fully. Here are the final allocations. The contiguous allocation has identified a large area that could be preserved in its natural state for the land protection objective, while the non-contiguous allocation has identified multiple locations where residential development could be most profitably carried out. For more information on the Spatial Decision Modeler, check out the Tearset tutorial, which can be accessed by going to Help and selecting Tearset Tutorial. 
Tutorial Exercise 2-13 will offer more information about the Spatial Decision Modeler as well as a step-by-step -step tutorial to help you begin using the Spatial Decision Modeler in Tearset.